Let's go back to Saturday the 21st of May 2022. Liverpool were on for a historic quadruple. Standing in their way though was a rematch against Real Madrid in the Champions League final with the Reds favourites and looking for revenge as well as a Man City side who looked as if they'd run out of gas after a poor result against West Ham just days earlier had combined with their unbelievable Champions League bottle to leave them in a very precarious position. Fast forward just a week though and Vinicius had just scored the winner in France to leave Liverpool devastated with Man City having seen a legendary 5 minute comeback against Aston Villa snatching the title back off them just days earlier. However, despite the heartbreak, the general thought amongst the footballing public was that with good business in the summer, they'd be back stronger for this campaign ready for another title charge. Yeah, um, about that. This is the story of Liverpool's remarkable six-month downfall. On the 8th of October 2015, Jurgen Klopp arrived at Anfield after a successful spell at Borussia Dortmund. Seven years, three Champions League finals, seven trophies won and eight runners-up medals later, and the German is undeniably one of the greatest managers in the side's history. And going into his eighth season at the club, it was unimaginable that within just a few months, he'd be facing criticism from the media, with the side's point tally being closer to the bottom of the league than second place. Yet after just two league wins in almost three months, that's exactly where Liverpool find themselves now. So where did it all go wrong for Liverpool after the Champions League final? Well in truth, things had actually gone wrong way before the Real game. After a few years of very little movement in the transfer windows, Liverpool's squad has aged with many players in their last legs going into the season, something I'll get back onto later. And it's also transfers this season which played a huge role in their downfall. Firstly, it would be absolutely ridiculous to not mention Sadio Mane leaving the club. For years, Mane had shone at Liverpool, with his partnership alongside Firmino and Salah arguably being the best in the world. But with Luis Diaz coming in and Mane having finished his sixth year at the club, it was time for the forward to seek pastures new. And so for the first time since arriving at Anfield, Jurgen Klopp was on the lookout for a direct replacement for Sadio Mane. And so therefore, in came in Darwin Nunez for a potential record-breaking £86 million. Of course, other minor business was done in the window, but this deal perfectly links me into a few points I want to make about Liverpool, which is firstly that it was a landmark change for the team. A far more physical player than Mane, the arrival of Nunez has caused chaos in the Premier League for everyone. Two goal contributions off the bench on his debut was quickly followed up by a red card in his first start, as Liverpool found themselves with just two points from the opening two games, going into a huge clash against Man United, which they'd gone to lose 2-1. Where three games into the season, Liverpool found themselves just one point off the relegation zone, as questions had already started to be asked about whether they were still title contenders. Then came Bournemouth. Well, what the hell, but... <laughs> They followed their 9-0 win up with another victory against Newcastle, with the Carvalho 96th minute winner being the only time Newcastle have lost this season. Looking at this then and you think that Liverpool were back. Two wins in seven games had showcased that there was definitely something wrong with this Liverpool side and that they weren't just starting badly compared to normal, they were just bad compared to normal. And this was for a variety of reasons, but if you're wondering what's actually gone wrong with Liverpool, there's one main answer which can be explained with various examples and causations, and it's that Liverpool are in transition. Now Nunez is far from the only problem at Liverpool, and actually if anything he's been the solution to a lot of them, but in terms of directly looking at why they're no longer the same team as they were last year, the Uruguayan forward certainly stands out. Firstly, Liverpool's XG has significantly decreased this season, with a lot of it being down to their huge drop-off in pressing intensity. Now this issue highlights two of my talking points so far, the sale of Sadio Mane and the ageing group of players at the club, particularly in midfield. Starting with Mane, who for years had been an excellent presser, allowing Liverpool to win the ball higher up the pitch and create chances from nothing. And this season, as their pressing intensity dropped, so has the number of times they regained possession higher up the field. And surprise, surprise, what happens when they regain the ball up the pitch less? they score less, shown clearly as this season we've seen the score at a rate 33% lower than they had last year. Not only this, but the lack of winning the ball higher up the pitch has of course led to problems further down, as teams now have more time to build out from the back, where we've seen the most notably target spaces in behind fullbacks. These areas being targeted have then led to centre-backs having to come out and cover them, leading to a larger gap down the middle in the final third, the danger zone for opposition strikers. And this has been made even worse for a significant drop in performance from Fabinho this season, who's even been replaced in the starting lineup in recent weeks. In years gone by, Liverpool's midfield would aid in pressing sequences further up the pitch, as well as shielding the back four from any danger centrally. This underperformance from their midfield has combined with an injury crisis at Anfield, leading to them looking weak and sluggish, which has caused a huge issue for the Reds, as their XGD is halved from last campaign. 
For years, Liverpool worked as a well-oiled machine, with each player being fine-tuned to reach the highest level possible in an interdependent ecosystem, which needed everyone to do their job in order for it to thrive. And now, through replacing one of the most key parts in their system with a player very different, it's unsurprising that it's no longer working as well as it used to. But rather than the problem being with the addition of Darwin Nunez himself, it's actually with the fact that the loss of one player shouldn't be making such a huge impact on this team. As I covered earlier, Liverpool hadn't invested a few years back whilst they were at the top, which has led to this happening further down the line, with a squad that's gone stale. If you take a look at the age profile of the squad, you can see there's two distinct groups of players at the minute, of players leaving their primes and others about to enter it, with very few stars actually in that sweet spot in the middle. Compare that to Man City and you can understand why one of the two teams is in ninth place right now and the other is battling it out for a treble. A perfect example of this can be seen in the recent news of João Cancelo's move to Bayern. Many fans around the world were shocked to see this, saying that Cancelo was one of City's best players and that it was ridiculous to let him go. However, if you look at things with the context of Liverpool right now, you can see that it was absolutely the right call from Man City. Instead of having one constant group of players for years on end, Pep Guardiola's always keeping things fluid by making a couple big sales and signings each year, with the aims of maintaining a good average age of the squad. Now of course, going into this season we'd seen this less from City. However, if anything, that just proves my point further, as with the oldest squad they've had in a while, City are also the worst they've been in a while, with people using the signing of Erling Haaland as a scapegoat rather than looking at the bigger picture. Now what does that remind me of? To put it simply, Darwin Nunez has not been a bad signing, and to put it even simpler, he will be a great one. It's just that right now he's entered and added to a squad in transition, which makes him look like the anomaly when in fact he's not. Funnily enough, Nunez actually has a higher XG than Mane did last year, and so with a year or two to improve his consistency, it's undeniable that Liverpool's scoring rate will go back up to normal, with the defensive side of things actually being Liverpool's bigger issue right now. With that now being clarified, let me summarise my answer on why Liverpool is so bad and move on to what's next for them. There are three main reasons why I think Liverpool is so bad right now. A squad in transition, underperformance from players and a lack of investment in the past. So how can Liverpool fix these issues? In terms of the first problem, there's not much Liverpool can actually do right now. As if they were to just sign players in their prime at the minute, they'd just face the same situation in two or three years. Which is why I think the signing of Gakpo in January actually made sense, even if they maybe could have done with another midfielder at the same time. For the second one, dropping said underperformers is probably the easiest and most thought of solution, which of course we've seen Jurgen Klopp do in the last few weeks. Not only this, but underperformance is an issue caused by the other two I mentioned, as with a squad in transition, it's a lot more likely for a player to underperform due to a lack of stability around them, something accentuated further due to the fact that Liverpool were a side which had seen little change for years, which of course brings me on to the final point, which is a lack of investment. I appreciate by now it probably feels like I'm just regurgitating everything I've already said so far in this video, so I'll leave you with just a simple sentence before getting on to what the future holds for Liverpool. If you want to avoid Liverpool's problems right now, buy and sell players every single year. Just copy Man City if you don't understand what I'm saying. And so now finally, what's next for Liverpool and will they ever be good again? Yes, of course they will. In the short term, I think we can expect to see Liverpool stop underperforming so much in the league. And even with the team in ninth right now, I'd be very surprised if Liverpool don't at least make the Europa League this season. And what about the future? Well, I think that Liverpool are run by people too smart to let this ever happen again. I'd be shocked if we ever see Liverpool with a squad as unbalanced in terms of age as it is right now, or at least not under Jurgen Klopp, who's been around the block for too long to not understand why this is happening. That also brings me on to my final point, which is that the German is absolutely the right man for the job of rebuilding this side. And so anybody who thinks he's finished and needs to be sacked, please just shut up, it will only age badly for you. I'm not saying that Liverpool will be back for good next year or even the year after that, but what I am saying is that despite the fact they're struggling right now, this is not the last you've heard of this Liverpool side. Mark my words, they will be back. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like and comment if you did, but most importantly, subscribe if you're new. Follow all of my socials, link in description. But for now, enjoy your day.